For all the years I've worked in a museum, I think that, you know, as we like to say, people like magic, right? Yeah. And this piece has a lot of magic to it. Um, and I think I like, I spent a lot of time looking at technically how it was put together, and that was very curious to me. I have to say, for a piece that's supposed to be about ephemerality and the fragility of life, the image maybe left me a little lackluster. What really struck me, though, was how many of these pieces, even though it was a very heavy topic, had humor woven into them? And yeah. I'm a big believer that you don't see the truth unless you see the funny side of things as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we each had different favorites, but we almost always selected something that had some funny or humor woven into it. And I see why the public picked it. It's shiny, and people like shiny things. <laughs> um, I like shiny things. And... Um, it, and, but I don't think it went far enough. I think it needed to be more dense. I think it needed more. More is more for that piece. <laughs> I have to say, this one for me really was, you know, WTF, WTF. Yeah. I couldn't, I, what I'd like to know is really um, to ask the public why they voted for it. I really want to know what, why people voted for it. And that's not to discount the work or the artist, but I couldn't, I don't know if it's because it was in a hotel and there are a lot of people going through, but there's just something about this work compared to all of the other works that you could have voted for in this category that just left me confused. It overshadowed what I think were some sincere yeah. themes and ideas sure. sort and of the, woven. And the message that they were actually trying sure. to Sure, it was just aesthetically the wrong right. match. Yeah. Do you think so the, the artist is more proud of the craftsmanship than the message? I think some, uh, sometimes they get really focused on that and it doesn't go beyond that. Yeah. Because we love the piece. It looked really solid and then yeah. you walked around the back and you're kind of like, well, three-dimensional pieces, you should be able to see them from yes. any angle and yeah. still get the same yeah. sort of, you know, idea. The, the thing that jumped out at me was that, that there were no real indications of the children's hands in these pieces. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love the idea, but no kid I know could decorate their bike that beautifully, that pristinely. Right. And so I wanted to see either a video of the artist collaborating with children or some sign that the kids were involved in making these. I, I was a bit of a convert before, before I met Fred today. <laughs> I, I, I had a groaned a little in the, in the car on the way over. But um, I think meeting Fred and realizing just how complicated it is to, to make something that intricate and how well done it is. The big advantage of that piece was him. I yeah. think they're really talking about it. And I think without the context of the artist and all of that stuff around the craft, yeah. it, it would have lost me. Right. But, but I get it. It was dealing with strength and the environment that he was not afraid to actually fling himself around on the asphalt yeah. and moving these weights, which at some point you thought he was actually going to crush himself but yeah. it was just it was very moving especially in the environment it was outdoors yeah. and not really getting distracted by anything in the outdoors but just it was just very powerful i, I was gonna say if it was one of my artists i i, I do this all the time for my artists and they resign it but if it was one of my <laughs> artists i would have said what you do participatory is you have people send shoes to some part of the world that's in conflict where people right. need something mm -hmm. something the to honor the memory story. of yeah. this brilliant young man you know, sometimes, I think that does, sometimes name recognition gives something a certain weight and maybe you pause and think, oh, maybe I should give it a second thought. Um, or sometimes it maybe it gives you a kind of, you give it, you give it, you're more generous with it than you actually should really be. It made me look at the fireworks differently, totally. I mean, I love fireworks, um, but it just sort of made me stop and really pause of that this was a real commentary that was happening at that moment during Gulf War. I think there was something else I brought to it, and I don't know how much other people brought to this, but I remember that. And so I think the third media in that was my memory. Mm. I think the fact that, that it's really hard in this kind of environment to have the musicians, the dancers doing a marathon for two weeks, I think it's really hard. If they could actually do smaller sets, I mean, I love the setting, in this one, especially where the musicians were sitting in different positions and the juxtaposition of everything and working together this was quite beautiful. S symphonies and orchestras should be listening and they should be getting out of those halls and into galleries and having <laughs> props and having people lie on the ground and play instruments and really make this a yeah, kind yeah. of spectator yeah, yeah, yeah. sport. That's great.